Hey everybody, welcome to Cowboy Leather and Shoe Repair. It's Friday. Hope everybody had a good week. We did. Uh, stayed busy all week, which is a good thing. I, you know, had a lot of, had a lot of uh, shoes in, a lot of shoes out. And... As far as leather, we made several different things and shipped them out too. So we had a good, uh, our internet sales were good. Uh, customers, you know, come through the door. That was good. So I'd say the week was good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I right, let's see here. I'll Today, I think we're going to make up a holster. This one is for a uh, 357 with a 3-inch barrel on it. Now, I've already got, I got that far with the tooling. That's all the tooling I'm going to put on here. I've taken and uh, slicked up the edges. I got... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, clicker dies for these. So, what nice thing about it is when you when you click them out, the edges are are pretty much smooth. Everything there's no lumps or bumps. So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna finish this one off. All right. So like I say again, this is for a uh, 357, and it's a three inch barrel. Okay, as you can see, I've got that done here. Now I've cut a uh, well. We're gonna put that in here. But first off, this is the belt loop. We're gonna bend that down. Now, with this one, kind of whack out a little bit here, make things life a little easier. You bend it down a little bit here, or, so you can see what I'm doing banging on. Just watch my hands. All right, <clears throat> now with this, you can run it over here close to close to this side over here, and we'll just kind of halfway fold that around there. Now, if you look at it, I haven't got it. I've got a belt laying here, but anyways, it'll put a can on that holster, you know, like that. Or you can move it back, move it this way. It'd be your uh, be straight up, pretty much straight up and down. So I think I'm just going to hit the happy medium here. And we'll go in the middle. Take my scratch all here and just kind of put a little scratchy here. A little scratch there. Just that's basically so I know where, where we're going. Now. Before we get all excited and start adding glue to in here, I want this belt loop to have a to fit onto a uh, th two inch belt. So while we're doing that, it's going to tell me I can curl that down a little bit. All right, that's three. Two inch right there. So that means I can come up here. Just grab me a line. Kind of freehand it. I don't need to see it. But that's going to be the stitch, stitch line. So now we can put the glue on it. But for 
before I do that. I'm going to score this a little bit. A little score here. Now, this is uh, 10 ounce, 9 to 10 ounce uh, saddle skirting. So, it's already been dyed. It's just ready to do it. And, I mean, it's nice it's got a nice front on it the back that's just from you know me moving it around but anyways you don't have to dye it once you get it all put together it's ready to go out for the customer apply a little glue here a little schmutz of glue here set it aside now before I start this video I just finished this one up got a US stamp on it belt this is uh, it's for a uh, 38 with a 6 inch barrel on it, but this piece here is a uh, Heritage Arms 22. So, when I list it, I'm going to list it as a holster for this type of... I, they don't like us calling them what they are. They call them pew pews. Let's just call them a bad guy bopper. Oh, one thing I do have to do is I have to put the uh, the hammer thong on. You know, probably put, poke two holes right here and just loop it over. So, but anyways, that's this is made out of the same leather as we're making this other one. It's just got it's a plain simple. You know, done up with uh, uh, is a 277 thread. Makes a nice looking holster. I've sold these before. In fact, I haven't had any uh, for the uh, for a revolver in a while. So, got a couple. Like I said, I've mentioned in a couple of my other videos that uh, I've got uh, cross show to go to, uh, excuse me, in April, so I'll take these, and I've got some other holsters hanging out there on the wall, uh, and my other last video, I, I, uh, showed how to make, uh, different kind of, uh, suspenders. So, I'm going to make some more of those, make some more belts, so I can make a pretty decent showing at the craft show. If you're going to, if you're going to go to these craft shows, uh, I would say have a good, have a good uh, selection of what, whatever you're making. If you're making belts, if you're making handbags, if you're making whatever, you know. Have enough that, uh, you know, Different people look at them. They'll see you got three or four. And I find when you've got three or four of this and whatever, they're more apt to buy. If you go, if they come into your booth or whatever, and they only see that you've got one, uh, they don't have kind of. I think they don't have a tendency to buy. So. And I do the same when I uh, sell something out of, the, uh, out of my shop. Uh, customer buys one. I may have two or three hanging on a wall yet, but I'll sit down and I'll make 
make, uh, instead of making one to replace it, I'll make two or three. Because you always run out when you're busy. And you don't have a chance. And I don't want to miss a sale. You know, I, I'm kind of greedy that way. You know, if I can, if I can make a sale, I want to make it. So, let's see, this should be ready to pinch and put together. Okay. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to go stitch this up. Be right back. All right, we're back. Tap in. All right. I'm down here a little bit. Now you could take and just double, you know, secure. Put a uh, copper or brass rivet right there in the middle. But if you do that, then you want to line this holster. And on the uh, revolver holsters, I usually don't uh, line them. Because I, I, maybe I'm a purist. They didn't line them back in the day. I'm not lining them. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the uh, the wall line and tip it down. This holster you don't have to, I find that I don't have to put the wall on it. It uh, fits, I know it will fit the uh, 357 uh, Smith and Wesson without putting a weld in it. But it will fit the uh, uh, 357 the Smith & Wesson and a couple of the other 357s that are out there with the weld in it. So, with or without, doesn't make any difference. But just for the sake of making it, I'm going to put a weld in it. It doesn't hurt, it just takes a couple extra minutes. Okay, so just lay this aside here. Get this thing out of the way. These are simple holsters to make, and they're fun to make. I myself, I like make like I say, like I said, I make like making the cowboy style holsters. Man, it seems everybody and their brother is making, you know, for the newer polymer framed uh, semi -automato, yeah, automatics and stuff like that, and they like to line them and you know. Mold, uh, wet molding and everything else. I want to make them simple. Holster for a revolver. The only one I do make uh, in a semi-automatic is the uh, for the 1911. There is a holster. I have a holster pattern hanging over on the wall for the uh, 1911. And some of these guys do the uh, cowboy action shooting. They use the 1911. They've got uh, a class, what do they call it, uh, Wild Bunch. And they use the 1911s. That's the only one I, I make a uh, uh, holster for for semi automatic. Excuse me. 
All right. Like I say, these go, these holsters go together pretty quick. You can also hand sew this. So don't, you know, I just, when I started out, I did all hand stitching. And arthritis and my hands used to cramp up on me. So then I started buying sewing machines and using those. Every once in a while, I will go and um, do a little hand stitching just to keep in practice. But 90% of the uh, holsters I make are sewn on a machine. Now, I could, you know, get, I've got uh, what they call a camel brown uh, thread. In the uh, 207 or 277, but you know I think the uh, the white shows off. Now if I do black, uh, a black holster, I sew it up in uh, in white because a lot of times I make uh, the. Uh, Civil War flap holsters, and that was all that stuff was uh, anything basically in that period was white thread. So, you know, anything Civil War period or before the Civil War, uh, French American, whatnot, was all uh, white thread. So, I've got, I've got red, but red would look gaudy. Now, if I was doing a holster with some inlay in it, uh, then I might uh, change up the color of thread. But, just for this, everything you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you've got a machine, your Sony's on a machine, Every time you change the color, you change the color of your, your uh, thread. That means you got to un, unthread the machine, rethread the machine. Sometimes you may have to tweak the, uh, the tension here or there. You know, you bump it. It does. It might knock it out of whack or whatever. It, it's the same thing with when you uh, change the thickness of, of your leather. You know, you gotta you gotta tweak your upper tension, you know, on, on the upper thread. So I myself I try and stay away from changing uh thicknesses you know, uh of the leather or changing my thread. I say pretty much everything. I don't like change. All right, let's see if I can get this thing together. Uh, no, it's still a little tacky yet. But. Uh, what else can we chat with while we're, while we're waiting on this here to set up? Oh, I've seen some. Uh. uh Post somebody that today I saw I can't remember where exactly it was, but they ordered up some <clears throat> uh, veg tan leather. They got it off Amazon, and they got it, and it was a uh, milled or here's called it was milled um, pebble grain. And it was soft and floppy. Well, the customer fussed. You know, I hate beating a dead horse. But 
go through somebody, uh, uh, one of the stores, you know, Tandy, Weaver, uh, somebody like that, if you're going to get leather, that way you're consistent. And if you call them and say, hey, I'm going to make this or I'm going to make that, uh, you know, they'll guide you through what you need. You know, don't, because when you order something offline like that, sometimes you get the gold mine and sometimes you get the shaft. So, you know, be careful when you order stuff. And I saw also that uh, there was uh, somebody posted a picture and whatever else. There's a scam or scammer going around on uh, on these different uh, sites, you know, leather for leather crafting and whatnot. This guy is taking a stock photo of a uh, heavy-duty stitching machine, posted it on there, and he's taking your money, and you don't get a product. And I've heard there's other scams going on, you know, with uh, leather, and I can't remember what the other one. There's, there's two or three of them going around. So if you're going to buy stuff off the Internet, be very, very, very careful because there are people out there that are going to get in your hip, try and get in your hip pocket. So, you know, like I say, there's plenty of places. You've got Tandy, you've got Weaver, you've got uh, uh, Mountain Leather, you've got God knows how many of them, you know, uh, Maker's Leather Supply. They've all got they've all got good leather. I have I heard, see very few complaints about you know we well not so much Weaver but Tandy. Well, every once in a while you get a bad you know somebody at Tandy will have a bad day in the warehouse and you'll get uh, something that looks like the chew, the rat's been chewing on it, but. You know, get your stuff from some from someplace else. There's too, like I say, there's too many scammers out there that are gonna take your money, and you don't get nothing. And the cost of tools to get I mean to to get into this it's expensive. And you know if you want to pr progress, you'll want to get better tools, get more tools. It's expensive. I can't say any more than it's expensive. You know, I've noticed since I've been into it, you know, I can't remember the prices right offhand, but uh, I'd spend 12, uh, 12, 13 years now. I've seen a price in leather. I've seen the price in tools go up. And I know... You know, when I started into the uh, shoe end of this, uh, you could get a pair of, uh, like, heels for cowboy boots. You know, pay $2 for them, you know, for the pair. Now they're 5 $6 a, uh, a pair. So, you know, everything's going up. So, yeah, just, you know, be careful what you're doing on the Internet. Because somebody's out there, they'll screw you. And not think and not think twice about it. So, let's see if we can get this thing together. <clears throat> I don't want to make it a this a long video. Crunch it down a little bit. All right. Now I've already got my groove in here. So let me jump over here to the stitcher and 
We'll stitch it up. Open it up a little bit. Put you on hold here a minute. I gotta get something. All right. There it is. Done finished. All I gotta do is put the uh, hammer thong on it and we're done. So, that's how I build holsters. Simple. No stress, no fuss, no muss. I've got some other ones over there that got, got the screwed on and everything else. They're actually, you know, regular gun for gun belts. If I'm going to build up a, a gun belt rig. That's... I've got two or three of those built up. I think I made a video on uh, the last one I built. But anyways, that's two holsters today plus some other stuff that I had come in. So I had a pretty good day. I'm going to end the video here. And what time is it? It's... Almost time to close the doors and, and start the weekend. So, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and share. The more, the more you thumbs up I get. Right now, I'm working on trying to get that. Uh, I got to have like four, four thousand hours of views. So. You be my yeah, be monetized. Seems like it took forever and a day to to get uh, up to where I'm at now. But anyways, I'll get there eventually. Like I say, 
I'd appreciate it. And all you people that have uh, subscribed to my channel and you've been dedicated followers, I appreciate it. I'll give you a thumbs up. I'll give you two thumbs up. You know, just comment. I think uh, everyone. I think uh, you know. If I get one or two comments, at least I know somebody's uh, watching the video. Then I'm not just sitting here wasting my breath, wasting my time. You know, yeah, some of the uh, content I've got may not be very uh, wealthy in knowledge, but you know, if you catch just a, a little bit. That some of the things I do that may help you, then it makes me happy. So, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a good weekend. Cowboys out of here. Bye.